Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Kreicho, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Jujutsu version control system, or JJ. That's an interesting thing to say. For most of the last decade, version control has meant for most developers, Git. I think it's time for that to change. I wrote a big long essay that I published at the beginning of February digging into Jujutsu, and I have been using it full time as basically the only thing I use for version control since somewhere around, I don't know, September last year, and I'd been using it quite a bit before that as well. Why should we get past Git? Well, I'm going to explain a little and then show you a lot today. Git is great for its time and its capabilities. When Git came out, we needed the things it provided. Distributed version control was a big upgrade over the previous world we lived in, non-distributed version control. Some of you watching this may not have ever lived in the world of CVS or even SVN, still less something like the Polytron version control system and Serena as a wrapper around it. I did live in that time. It was a bad time. Git and Mercurial and a number of other things that came into existence in the mid-2000s were a big step up from that. Suddenly, I could just work on my machine with a full copy of the repository, and you could work on your machine with a full copy of the repository. And if we happened to be touching the same things, that was, that was fine. We didn't have to lock a file and then check it in later. Branches as first-class entities... It's not a thing you even think about that much if you've come up in the last 10 years, because of course you can just make a branch. That's fine. Of course you can. That wasn't true before Git and Mercurial and the other things in that generation of version control systems. I would never go back, but I would like to go forward because I've also spent the last 10 years using Git and before that Mercurial and, well, suffice it to say that Git itself deserves some criticism, let's say. Its command line interface is infamously complicated and not necessarily in ways that fall out of the fact that it's it's just doing a complicated thing. Mercurial is, for those of you who've never used it, what some of us like to call an existence proof for a command line interface to version control systems that they can actually be good. Mercurial's version control interface is, is good on the command line, but most of us use Git because GitHub won and Linux is huge and influential and lots of tools really just came to expect Git is the thing you're going to be using. But Git also has a lot of internal complexity that is a result of its history, a result of the choices and taste of the people behind it, and I don't necessarily share those. And along comes Jujutsu. And there are a number of other interesting this generation version control systems out there. Sapling from Meta, Pigil as an independent project. But of all of these, the one I like the best is Jujutsu. Jujutsu is Git compatible, which means, as we'll see, you can just use it with an existing Git repository, which is a huge superpower for adoption. In fact, that's a big part of how Git got successful as a way of being adopted. It, it could interoperate with SVN, subversion repositories. And it also has an interface that, Jujutsu, has an interface that is more inspired by Mercurial and generally good interface design principles than by Git, which is great. It also has a couple cool superpowers. It understands conflicts in a first-class way. It understands that you might want to move around commits in a first-class way, and maybe with a better interface than Git Rebase Interactive, which is not, not my favorite. I can use it. I've used it extensively. But, you know, it could be better with a clear understanding of what a merge commit is that understands how merge conflicts work. And because it can treat merge conflicts as a first class part of working with the system, it doesn't break everything and keep you from moving forward. You can say, I'll solve that later and keep working on your system. And all in all, working with Jujutsu feels like, in ways that are hard to articulate until you just start using it, a huge step forward from using Git. So much so that every time I go back to using Git for some reason, which has become more and more rare over the last six months, 
I feel like I'm swimming through mud or trying to dodge steps over you know, a volcano or some other metaphor of this variety. It It's a bad time. I could talk about that all day, or you could go read my 10,000 word essay, or we could see some example. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend the next few minutes walking through some of the basics of what working with jujutsu is like. And at the end, I'll also link to a video from another recent member of the broader jujutsu community who's working on a web-based user interface that will go in a nice little wrapper app and therefore be able to be distributed across Windows, hopefully Linux, Mac OS. And it's web-based in terms of its user interface. It's using a cool piece of technology called Tori. You can go dig into those things in more detail elsewhere and later, but as good as the demo I'm about to show you is, in some ways that one's even better. But don't run away, stay here. Let's let's dig in. So I'm here in iTerm2 and I'm going to just work through a demo here. And the initial demo I'm going to work through is actually going to be just cloning a repository that I happen to know works really well for this. And I'm going to just call it TM. True Myth is a package that I work with regularly that I authored seven and a half years ago. And GH gets stuck sometimes here, but now it's not stuck. And I can clone it using GH, which is a nice little tool for interacting with GitHub that GitHub itself ships. And I can step into True Myth and I can see, okay, here's a repository. It has a Git history that's, you know, long and mostly lately involves bumps from Dependabot. Not all that, not all that illuminating. Here, I have Jujutsu installed and I have the latest public version installed. So everything I'm going to show you, you can brew install or get from Nix packages or cargo install if you so like. I say cargo install because yes, it's a tool built in Rust. It's pretty quick. It is very stable. I like using it. Let's say I'm working on true myth and I want to make some changes and first superpower, I can say JJ git init with a git repo located right here. And cool, I've now imported changes from the underlying git repo. I haven't associated any remote branches locally yet. So I can do that. I'm going to say JJ branch track main at origin. And I've got a tracking branch just kind of like I would anywhere else. And you know what? Let's let's make a change here. Here's my system or my my directory. What if I okay, number one, let's check the status with Jujutsu like I did with Git. Cool, the working copy is clean. Okay, that's kind of what I would expect. The working copy is labeled. That's interesting. That's not true in Git. The working copy is whatever's in the index, and there's a parent commit that has a message on it. Okay. And what if I JJ log? Ooh, that's that's pretty. Okay, that's nice. But, but I mean, this is like git log dash dash one line dash dash graph or something like that. It's not that interesting. But but again, notice that I just typed JJ git in it and here I am. And if I look in the root, uh, there's still my normal dot git and dot github and all of these things. But now there's a new dot JJ directory. And if I look at that, this has got a repo and working copy directory in it. And this has all the internal state of Jujutsu, just like the Git directory does. The trick is Jujutsu understands Git and it works with Git. And every time we do something in Git, Jujutsu can import it. And equally importantly, when we make changes using Jujutsu, if it's a Git repo that's backing it, it just commits it to the Git repo. So for example, if I say, touch hello dot text and i want to go ahead and commit that now okay number one let me show you the jujutsu status says there's a working copy change we've added a file named hello dot text this is kind of like working with git and i can say whoa i added something with jujutsu so if i jj log i've created a new commit past that i have a head at git commit here and it's got a commit message of woe, and it 
is exactly what we would expect. But I can also git log and see the same thing because it is just committed that operation against the underlying git repository. Cool. I mean, I guess it's a nicer interface to git maybe based on what I said earlier. No, it's a lot more than a nicer interface to git because one, Jujutsu will someday have its own backend, and that means that it can interoperate with, say, the giant mono repo at Google, which is where this is being developed, or a custom backend that you use to work against Fuse over a network, which again is an interesting kind of thing that people might want to do, or its own native backend, which can add support for features that Git doesn't have. But even in the Git world, we can do some cool things that are very different from what you might be able to do just with normal Git because Jujutsu has a very different understanding of what version control can mean. In particular, it has a distinction between the commit, which is all you think about in Git, the commit SHA. There are underlying things that if you're a Git wizard, you might know more about, but a commit is sort of the fundamental thing you operate against. Jujutsu has that, but it also has the idea of a change. So let's see a little bit of what this looks like in practice. I'm going to make a new demo here, and I'm going to say JJ demo. I've done this before. So let's go in here and let's go ahead and close it and we'll open Nova here. Cool. So there's nothing in this directory yet, and that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize a new repo JJ git init with a git repo here. Oh, you can't do that because it isn't a git repository. Well, what if I don't actually care? What if I just want to use it directly? Oh, I can. So number one, now I have just dot JJ. But if I look in there, we have the same things we had before, more or less, except... Now, if I look in store, there's a Git folder. And I didn't show you this before. It wasn't particularly relevant yet. This is a Git repo. This is exactly what you would see if you did something that had a .git folder directly in the root. JJ says, you can do that if you want, but you don't have to. And it's useful too when you're interoperating with an existing repo. All those things work. And in a future video, I might show more of that. Today, I just want to show you It'll create a Git repo as the backing repository store in the cases where that matters, but it doesn't have to show it to you. It doesn't have to put .git in the root, etc. Cool. Enough time spent on that. Let's come over here and say we're going to make a file and name it a.txt, and it's going to just say hello, Jujutsu. And I'm going to come over here and say, what's the status? Okay, working copy changes. First thing let's learn about Jujutsu is I can describe this commit. Desk is short for describe. And I'm going to say add a.txt. Okay, the working copy is still at the same thing. I mentioned the change ID before. This is the change ID. I mentioned the commit before. This is the commit. We now have a new git commit representing the working copy. The working copy is a commit, is a change, both. And delightfully, that means we can iterate on it in place in the way that you kind of have to do using the index or with amending and otherwise changing existing commits in git. Here, we don't have to do that. I can come over here before adding anything else and moving on and say, give me a new file. I'm going to call it b.txt. I'm going to say... Hey, JJ, cool. And I'm going to come over here and say, what's the status? Oh, the working copy. Our change ID is still the same as it was before. Yet again, we have a new commit ID because there's a new commit associated with this in the Git backing repo. But it's just one change. And I can say, cool. Uh, I need to change the commit message I put on this because it's not just A now. It's actually add A.txt and B.txt. And now I've done that. And since Git works the way it does, that Git repo now has a different commit again, still the same change ID. Everything in Jujutsu works in terms of changes. And that is part of what gives it the power that it has. It can evolve the history of a change without having to evolve the uh, underlying Git commits in some way. It can just say, okay, we're done with that one, throw it away. However, if I want to see how that has evolved over time, I can say 
JJ OBS log, which is the obsolution log. It should probably be renamed to something like evolution log or something like that. There's ongoing discussion about that. But I can say JJ OBS log for V, this little highlighting right here shows you the shortest identifier you need to be able to identify it. And a lot of times when working with Jujutsu, it's just literally one letter. So how has this evolved over time? Dash RV for the revision or the change ID. Okay, we can actually see here now how this change has evolved over time. And these are all hidden because they're no longer part of the active idea of the change. Initially, it was just an empty commit. And there was nothing in it. So it was empty and there was no description set. And that was under something labeled BD25. And we never actually saw that one. Then, still all under this same change ID, we got to F35D, which is this one. Whenever we run JJ status or any other command, it snapshots everything and creates, in the case of git backing store, it creates a git commit to go with it while still preserving the same change. So you actually have a lot of git commits and they'll get garbage collected by git's normal approach to this. Not a big deal though. The neat thing is, if we wanted to go back and restore this commit, we could. And you can see how this particular change has evolved through these git commits over time. It can be really handy when you want to see, wait, what did I do? This is the thing that you really have a hard time doing. You can kind of do it with git's ref log, but it's hard. You just kind of have it for free here. And you have this also for the entire repo. I can say JJ op log, which is the better done operation log. And it's going to show me every operation that's happened in the whole repository. And this is closer to what you might see with the ref log, but notice that it includes things like, I'm going to snapshot the working copy because you ran JJ status, or I'm going to update this commit because you ran JJ describe. Every single operation you do exists in the op log and you can go back to any point in the operation logs history by grabbing the revision ID here and just saying JJ op restore that revision ID. Now, I don't want to do that. I actually want to keep A and B here, but it's a superpower when you can just say, show me the history of the repository and I'm going to work directly with the changes that happen to the repository. And I, I can go back to any point in my history and get it back trivially. What this also means is that JJ comes with a really, really handy undo command. Undo is equivalent to saying, give me an operation and I'm going to restore whatever happened before it. So any operation, including describing something, I can undo. So if I go JJ op log again, cool, okay, I, I changed this description. What if I want to unchange that description? I just type JJ undo. And my working copy has gone back to having a dot text. And notably, this is the same git commit ID that we were on before. We kept it around for long enough under the hood. There's no git garbage collection happening. We just, just went back. Now, if I look JJ op log, cool, I did an undo operation. What if I want to undo the undo operation? Because I want to go back to having both A and B as part of my description. Well, I can say JJ op restore, like I did a moment ago. And hey, we're back, back where we were again. And our overall log just has this single entry in it. Okay, so superpowers under the hood, right? But most of the time I'm just committing and making changes to the repo and kind of getting stuff done. So let's see a little bit of that. Let's come over here and make a new file. We'll call it c.txt. And I'm going to say, neat, JJ is cool. And I'm gonna go over here and say JJ status. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't actually want C to be part of this commit. I want it to be part of a new commit. Well, in Git, I would need to use the staging area to change what's in or out of a commit. With Jujutsu, I just say JJ split, and I'm going to use the built-in SCM diff editor, source control something diff editor from one of the contributors. And I'm gonna say, let's keep A and B in the first part and cool. That's a useful commit description. It just says add A and B seems good. 
That's what I had before. Now I can label the second part and I can say add C dot text. Cool. Okay. So now I have a first part and a second part. First part, it's the same first part we've had. It's always been that same change ID. Got a new commit ID. Now we have a new change here. And if I look at our log, we can see that. I do this all the time. I historically have used the git index to do this kind of thing. But in Jujutsu, I just work on the working copy till it's in a state I'm happy at. And then I create a new commit by typing JJ new. One of the other neat things about Jujutsu, I showed you earlier JJ describe. Well, JJ has a commit command. I could say commit with a message like I did earlier, but commit is just a shorthand for JJ describe and then JJ new. And I can create new commits anytime I want. I can then go back and describe them anytime I want separately. So if I wanted to say, you know what, I actually, here's where I am. I've got a, this empty new commit that I can do some work on, but I don't like this description. I want to change it. JJ desk dash M add C dot text to the history. I just need to pass it a revision and I can say, look, M is all I need to describe that one. Cool. Okay. So it rebased one descendant commit. And the reason is that I changed this parent commit here. Remember, we're sitting here. The at sign in Jujutsu always tells you, here's where we are right now. And if I look at my log, still exactly like it was before. I'm on this empty commit, but I've changed the description for the first one or my parent rather for add C to the history. And you know what? I Maybe I want to give a totally different description to the first thing we worked on. Start it up with A and B dash R V. Okay. So I rebase two descending commits, M and T. And hey, I just re-described something two commits above me in the commit graph. You can do that in Git. You have to Git rebase dash interactive, uh, but it's kind of annoying. So what if I come over here and I add a D dot text and I say, it's D. I can close all of these. Look at my status. Okay, JJ commit dash M add D. Nothing very interesting here. What if I want to go back to a previous commit, though, and change it? Well, again, in Git, I, I could do that. Uh, but if I if I do, I'm going to have to use Git Rebase Interactive and then amend or, or squash or something like that. I don't have to do that in Jujutsu. I can just say edit M. Let's say I want to just add some more stuff to c.txt while I'm here. OK, so what's our current state? Remember, at is where I am. That's where I'm at in the repository history. And I just moved backwards. Fine. It's not a problem. And so D is gone over here and it has superpowers. Okay. So cool. Um, so we rebased one descendant commit onto our updated working copy because the working copy is this M change that we're now revising. We're editing it in place. Okay, that that's new and different, right? That's not a thing that's easy to do, and you definitely don't get automatic rebasing when you're working in Git. That's not a thing at all. And it just did it. Okay. What if what if I wanted another commit in between? Well, again, in, in Git, I could do that with an interactive rebase. Here, I can just say new after this, and it's going to add it between this and the next commit. Rebase one descendant commits again, as you would expect. Now I'm at this new empty commit. And here I could say, you know what? Let's do something wacky. Let's add D dot text and say different way to get D in the repo. I'm going to go ahead and say, describe this. Let's make a problem for ourselves. Hmm. Okay conflict. Here's, here's the problem we've created. I had this automatic rebase, right? Rebased one descent commits onto working copy. But remember, we've added D in both of those. So hmm. let's look at T again. Let's say edit T and look at the status. We've got a conflict here because this also added D. And we've got conflict markers here. It's not very different in appearance than what you might see in Git. But it's interesting that Jujutsu just let us 
have it here. It didn't freak out or something and make us change it. In fact, I can say, yeah, I'll come back to that later. I have something else I want to work on now. Uh, so there's a conflict here, but it's fine. E dot text. Look, ma, conflicts are fine. And in fact, I could, I could just add and add to this file after the conflict. No problem. Jujutsu is fine with this. You would not be fine with this. So if I look at my status here, it's still conflicted in D, uh, but I can say, let's keep going. And that's fine. Uh, and I can make a new commit now. And we still have this conflict back here. Uh, maybe we should resolve it. So there are two ways we could resolve it. One is we could edit it directly like I showed you, or we could say, let's make a new commit after T and use that as a place to go ahead and try to fix it up. So anytime I write JJ new, so far I've been doing it without arguments, but anytime I use JJ new, I can just add an argument for the revision name and that'll be the parent that it creates for it. So now I've created a, my first branch. Branching is just... I created a new commit with a parent and that's separate from the previous commit. And here's our new one that we just went to. It's TT. Okay. So here I can resolve this the simple way by saying, I'm going to keep both of these and change the punctuation around. I've, I've resolved the merge now. Okay. So now if I look at this, there's no conflict on this one. And I just want that to be part of my parent. So if I'm thinking about this in Git terms, I'm going to have to, I guess, squash it in and then rebase or something to get it to end up where I want. I don't have to do that here. I just squash. And uh, okay, so one conflict was resolved. Let's look at what's going on. Well, this conflict went away. Remember, we used to have a conflict here. Now there's a conflict in this L branch or this L change from let's keep going because remember I had added some stuff to that file. So, okay, let's do the same thing. JJ new L. Um, let's look here at this. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I guess we, we committed that change with a conflict in it. So now we've got some extra conflicts, but I can, I can see that actually all we really need is this part here. And of course, a, a diff aware tool could handle this just fine. But now I've resolved it again. Okay. And if I JJ status, okay, we've resolved the conflict. So again, we can just squash it into the parent. Uh, the existing conflicts were resolved or abandoned. You can just throw them away if it doesn't matter. Here we are. No more conflicts. Uh, the, the branching is gone because we just threw away that empty extra branch that we had and we get to move on with our life. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that would have been incredibly painful and difficult to do in Git. And here we we just did it. And I did it in hard mode because I did it inline in D dot text, you know, using a plain text editor. I could have done it with JJ Resolve using a diff editor. And in a future video, I'll show you that as well as how this gets even cooler with rebasing. But I think at 30 minutes ish, we're good for the day. The key is to see Jujutsu's cool. It can do things that are hard in Git, and it feels pretty normal and natural. The interface is nice. You can do branching easily. We'll talk more about that in the future, too. In general, the, th the thing about working with Jujutsu is it just kind of makes sense, and then you go back to using Git, and you're like, wait, I've been living like this for years? Yeah, you have, but you don't have to. I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of deep dive introduction to working with Jujutsu a bit. I'll be back with more of these at some point in the future. If you'd like to know when that happens, subscribe. And if you liked this video, please do like it and maybe share it with people, help others find it. Thanks for watching.